Hi everybody! This is the process video I promised last time I made a video. It, this particular video is just me working on the lines for the scarf that I made for my friend's birthday. The technique is, the, is a silk painting technique that I learned at school last year, which I really enjoyed, and so I wanted to do it for my friend, and she wanted a Beauty and the Beast scarf, so we worked together to come up with a design, and that's what you can see me working on. So right now, you can, what you see me doing is the clear lines on the mirror, and I think I already did the little sparkle lines that are going to be around the tip. As I said in my vlog, this has been a really long process, but I didn't do it all at the same time. Though I did do all the lines in one day just over several hours. <laughs> this was one day that I had actually a lot of time. It was really great. So I worked on the clear lines and I let them dry and then I worked on the black lines and I let those dry and then I worked on the little writing bits on the scarf that go inside of the lines. Which I wanted to do after I did the outlines of the books because didn't know what would get smudged <laughs> if I tried to do that all at the same time. So as you saw, I did the clear lines for the mirror and the little dome that goes over the, the beast's rows, and now you can see me doing the black outlines of the books. And just as my vlog was an iPhone video, this is an iSight camera video. I recorded everything on my computer and then I sped it up. Which I believe I said was like 16 times the actual speed that I did it. It took several hours, but I really enjoy this technique of making scarves. So, I don't mind. And here you can see me doing the black lines for the rose. For this technique, it's really important to be specific about where you put the lines, because if the lines don't meet, it's kind of like in MS Paint, when you don't meet lines and then you use a bucket tool and it just goes everywhere. It's kind of like that. Obviously, the paint isn't going to fill the entire scarf by missing one line, but it would look very strange if it didn't, if the lines didn't meet, because they stop the paint from going all over the place. And now I'm working on Chip, and I was super happy with how Chip turned out, because he is super cute, and I've never managed to draw him before. And he's an adorable character. <laughs> and even though I did a lot of reference pictures, while I was drawing Chip, I still managed to forget the little gold band between his cup and his base. So, no hate comments, please. <laughs> Next time I do it, I'll do better. And there you saw me putting some water over the blue lines that I did for because I realized that I could get a better line and I didn't want the previous lines messing me up. Oh, if you were wondering, the blue lines are a water erasing sort of fabric marker. I used that instead of the time disappearing ink marker because I drew the lines and then it took over a day until I did the next part, which is the actual lines, not just the sketch lines. Um, but the blue lines do go away once you get the whole scarf completely wet, which is really great. And as you see, it, it took quite a while to write out the prologue for this scarf. It took half an hour, which sped up is still quite a bit of time. Every so often I had to pause and 
listen to the prologue because I couldn't remember what the words were, even though I can quote it. And every so often I also looked up how to spell a word because I didn't want to mess this up. It's for my friend's birthday. I want it to be as nice as it can possibly be. really happy with how the spacing turned out, too, because it ends with the Enchantress turning him into a beast. And it was lovely. Lovely spacing. Didn't plan it out, and I was really happy. But this is the finished lines, which my friend was really happy when I sent her <laughs> a video of it, and it was great. Thanks for watching, everybody. The colors video will be coming soon.